Most of you have probably heard about protein. But did you know the protein is throughout your body and can tell a story? Depending on how much or little is found, we can learn a lot from protein. I'm Andrew Chapman, and today we're going to take a very, very close look at what your body is trying to say here in the lab. I'm in the lab with Tom Clancy, the Director of Operations for the Laboratory of Medicine program at UHN. Welcome, Tom. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. having us. Thank you. Now, how many patients does the Laboratory of Medicine program at UHN serve every year? Well, the, the lab medicine program at uh, UHN is probably one of the larger laboratories within Canada. Um, as with most hospitals, we service two different types of patients. We service inpatients, or well, patients within the hospital. We have about 1,300 beds here, which uh, constantly are being turned over with patients. And then we have a big, big focus on clinic patients, but they're outpa outpatients, which we serve about 400,000 per year. And our total test volume going through all of our laboratories is about 25 million per year. Wow, that's amazing. And what's the lab's role in patient care? So although we do a lot of testing, I think our main role is providing diagnostic information to physicians, nurses, and, and clinicians so that they're able to treat patients. So I think we provide uh, um, mostly the information through the lab testing that we do. I'm here with Megan, who's the senior medical lab technologist here in the lab. And today we're going to do a pretty interesting test, right? Yes, we are. What's the name of this test? It's called protein electrophoresis. Okay, and what are we looking for in this test? So what we're going to do is we're going to apply a, an electrical current to the, protein, to the patient samples and depending on the charge of their proteins, they will either migrate to the positive charge or to the negative charge. And from that we can see if there's an abnormal protein or if everything is normal. And then what happens if you discover an abnormal protein? If we discover an abnormal protein, what we'll do is we'll, we'll measure the size of the protein and that way the physician, they can monitor if the abnormal protein is either increasing or decreasing, hopefully decreasing. And that way they can properly diagnose the patient and treat them? Yes, exactly. Awesome. All right, Megan, so we've electrically charged the samples, yep. we've put them on the gel, now what happens? So now, after we've stained the gel, what we're going to do is we're going to put this gel into the scanner. That's going to take a picture of all of these patient samples and that picture will then be converted into a graph where we can look to see if there's normal proteins, abnormal proteins, and if there are abnormal proteins, we can measure them. I'm here with Dr. Ivan Blazutic, who's a clinical biochemist, and he's pretty much the next chain in command after we take a look at the results of all the uh, abnormal proteins, right? You analyze them. Yes, indeed. How do you do that? So generally we're looking for the pattern that shows up. So I think Megan explained that this electrophoresis will show all the proteins that are present in the patient's serum or the person's serum who's been run. And then we look at the pattern to see if there's an abnormality present. So why would a test like this be ordered in the first place? So generally these tests are ordered when the physician sees a patient and they suspect a certain blood-based cancer or disease or plasma cell dysgrasia as they're known in a patient. So patients that may present with certain symptoms like uh, bone pains or fractures can have a, this malignancy, it's myeloma and various other ones, as an underlying cause. So this test really is the way to identify whether there is a malignancy hidden in these patients. Well, thank you, doctor. And thank you to the Laboratory of Medicine program at UHN. And if you want to see more videos like this and to find out more of what goes on in the lab, please visit medlabprofessionals.ca.